All right. Well, welcome everyone to our cooking demonstration today. My name is Alisa and I'm from Everyone's Harvest and we're a local nonprofit that runs certified food programs and um, farmers markets. And we currently have farmers markets every Sunday in Marina, Mondays in Pacific Grove, Wednesdays at Natividad Medical Center start this week, and Fridays at Salinas Valley Memorial. And at our farmers markets, you can shop for fresh fruits and vegetables directly from local farmers. And if you come, you can also find the rest uh, the ingredients for this recipe. And if you use EBT or CalFresh benefits at our markets, you can stop by our info booth and receive up to 10 additional dollars to spend through our market match program. Now, I just wanna review a few logistics before we get started. Um, I am recording this demonstration, so feel free to turn off your camera if you would prefer um, not to be filmed. And also please keep yourself muted during the demonstration. And if you have any questions, write them in the chat and I'll be sure to pass them on to our chef. And then we'll open it up for everyone to ask questions at the end directly. And if it makes it easier for you to view uh, the video, I recommend pinning Chef Brandon's video by uh, clicking on the upper, in the right hand, upper right hand corner, there's three dots you can click on and say pin video and that will help um, mostly show his video during the pre presentation. All right, so I think that's everything. Let's go ahead and get started and give a warm welcome to our chef today, Chef Brandon Miller. Welcome, Chef. Thank you. It's great to be, great to be here. And uh, we're going to do a nice little uh, zucchini salad. And I'm going to run through some other things um, since it's a very it's a very quick dish. It's very simple, and um, it's 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 uh, it's really it's really a, a very fast. Uh, so caramelized, I really like caramelized vegetables like in a ratatouille. Um, so zucchini, well, I'm gonna make ratatouille this week as well. Um, that's why I have so many, so many zucchini here. <clears throat> so uh, this dish is actually, um, it's a little Italian dish. And basically the, the, the ingredients are um, almonds. I use sliced almonds. I kind of like the natural ones. These ones are blanched, so they don't have the, um, skin on them they're just they, they work just as well but but i really like the ones with the skin on them they have a little bit more flavor a little bit more nutty flavor um but basically we're going to uh infuse the oil with those and then toss the zucchini and then we've got a nice big piece of uh of parmigiano reggiano here that we're gonna we're gonna shave on top of the salad um and then salt and pepper and olive oil is about all that goes into this uh, this dish it's very simple and it's but it's really a, a really excellent um, but what I was going to do first was I was going to go through, a, it's got, I use this, uh, Japanese mandolin here, um, to slice the, uh, zucchini. You could do it by hand. It's a little diff more difficult, but, um, but if you've got something like this, there's a lot of different versions of this people have in their homes, um, different slicers. And, uh, you basically, if you could slice it, if you can slice it fairly thin, you can just come back with a knife and, and julienne it. And that's what we're going to make. We're going to make a julienne. This little blade, there's three little blades. It's Ben Reiner, it's a Japanese mandolin company. You can get these at Asian markets. They're, they're about 25 bucks and, and you can do a lot of things with them. You can slice, slice things. And then it's got all these different, uh, it's got three of these different sizes of, of julienne blades. And it just screws in, it's got a little, now the joke in the, in the kitchens and in all the kitchens I've worked in as a chef, the joke was that we would call this the finger cutter because it's really easy to cut your fingers. So be very careful when you're using a, 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 a little machine like this. So now as you see the, the basically the tines have come up just high enough above the blade to, to cut both at the same time. And you get these uh, thin strands of on julienne basically of, of, of uh, zucchini. Uh, I'm going to send you show you a couple of other things first. Let's talk about uh, knives really quick. Um, if I've got a couple of steels here, these are these are basically they're not they're not knife sharpening tools. They're knife 
it all it does is realigns the molecules on the edge and makes it that that much that much sharper because um, that's what gets out of out of whack on your knife. So if your knife's not already fairly sharp, uh, it needs to be professionally sharpened. Or I've got a little gadget here that I use for when I go and travel. I bring this on track because I always I always stay in 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 homes and uh, and all the knives are terrible terribly uh, out of out of whack from people staying in the in these uh, in these places. So so I always bring this little guy with me, and it's got a coarse and a fine, and you can actually uh, you can actually pass it through and it's on the exact angle these little 20 degree angle that that uh that uh sharpens the knife and gets that gets that 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 edge going this is fairly sharp already uh so the next step is basically going to a um a steel or another trick because this this steel is made out of porcelain just like this plate is made out of porcelain and a lot of people don't know that porcelain is harder than steel so porcelain will actually uh, sharpen your knife. So if you're, if it will actually put an edge back on a, on a fairly sharp knife. Um, so what you do with that, with that is you flip the plate over and there's, there's usually no glaze right on this little edge around the outside. And, uh, you can just take your knife at a 20 degree angle and go that you can go away from yourself. So it's a little safer and just back and forth at a 20 degree angle. And that'll actually align the molecules on the end of your knife, on the edge of your knife and make it sharp. We'll come back to that plate for a salad. Uh, so now that I've got that sharper, this is the same thing. This is basically a porcelain, same thing, back and forth. If you're too scared to go towards your hand like this, you can stand it up like this and just go down towards the this is how we get people started in the kitchen so they don't cut their hand off basically super useful tips uh we had a question about if the sharpening needs to be done away from food like does it create any dust or things from not the really not 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 really i mean it's good it's good to just wipe your knife off after you're done it creates a little tiny bit the sharpening the actual sharpening you should have somebody professionally sharpen your knife or um but yeah the actual sharpening um depending on if you're using a wheel or a whetstone whetstones are have oil in a reservoir and three different stones basically in gradually from from coarse to fine and you start with the coarse one to start getting the, the edge the correct edge and then you do the medium one and then you do the fine one and then you wipe all that off and then wash your knife and then use the steel. But there won't really be anything coming off of the steels. I mean, it's really very minuscule. minuscule. Um, this is another type. It's very interesting. It's, it's, it's square. You can see that it's not round. Like a lot of these are round and there's two surfaces on here. There's a slightly rough surface and then there's a polished surface. And the slightly rough one is the one you start on with this one. And then you get the really fine molecule with the alignment with the uh, shiny side. It's really interesting little tool, works great. Okay, so that's sharpening 101, or at least maintenancing. Every time you pick up your knife in the kitchen, if you're, if you're a professional, you usually uh, put it on the steel really quick, uh, just so you always keep that, keep that edge. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of other technique, a couple other slicing things. We're going to take the ends off these zucchini. These are green zucchini. I really like green zucchini and the, the ones that look like these that are called gold bar zucchini. They're gold, but they're still straight. The crook neck ones, they seem to have a lot more seeds. Um, I don't, I tend not to use that many seeds. The seeds are a little bit uh, more bitter than the rest of the zucchini. Feel free to use the whole zucchini, but but um, that's why I get nice young zucchini like these that barely, the seeds have barely started to develop in here. Um, so, uh, you, and then, and then when we slice it on this, on this mandolin later, uh, I'll show you, I just kind of use the sides and get down to the end. I did just get rid of the little bitty center in the middle. Um, I just wanted to show you a few cuts too. And if you didn't have a mandolin, let's do that real quick. So, you just want to cut only almost as 
thin as human, humanly possible. You see how my, how my fingers are on the zucchini? I'm holding down the uh, zucchini with my knuckles exposed to the knife so I don't cut my finger. And I've got my thumb kind of way down here because a lot of times people's thumb slips into the, into the atmosphere. You gotta be careful with your thumb. Keep your thumb down here. And, and it gives you a guide. So your, your hand should be up against the couple knuckles when you're doing this. So that's, that's how, and I'm just gonna cut these in half again. And then I'm just gonna come back this way and I get a pretty good little, and you see, I just stacked them up. They're still stacked on top of each other from being sliced. You get a pretty good julienne, that's all right. You know, that's, that, that'll definitely suffice for the salad that we're gonna do. But like I said before, the other way I like to cook zucchini is very, very hot in the oven um, or in a really hot saute pan. And then in the oven, uh, you know, 500 degrees or so, just, just really caramelize it and then hit it maybe with a little balsamic on the way out of the oven um, and salt and pepper. Uh, it's a good thing when you're cooking, baking um, vegetables like this and eggplant and, uh, and zucchini that you don't salt it in the beginning, you salt it afterwards. Because if you start salting, if you salt your, your, uh, your zucchini and your eggplant, uh, it'll naturally start drawing water out of the vegetable and it will never caramelize in the oven. So you want to caramelize it and then season it afterwards. Other cool cuts, if you wanted to do say, something with like a fish dish and you just wanted some like little chevrons of of zucchini you just cut the zucchini Done. and see i've got the seeds left over this is you see how there's a lot of seeds and they're just not that they're they're even they're good they're, but they're just not they're a little bitter they get a little bitter we just make some little diamonds That's what you see a little restaurant cut, you know, it's got the little diamonds and a little piece of salmon there, you can imagine. And, and uh, so that's just another, another way to cut thing, cut it. And then um, there's a, an Asian roll cut that's really good. Actually works better for smaller vegetables, but I'll do it anyway. Um, but it's good for like these, these big, these things where you're going to roast them in the oven for a long time, because what happens is you, is, is that the vegetable shrinks because the water does disappear. And uh, so it's nice to have nice big chunky vegetables to start with. And this is basically you just roll a vegetable and you get these, these are used a lot in stir fry. So that's just another little vegetable cut for, for these guys. Um, let's move on to the salad one. I have a question, Chef. Do you, I know you said the seeds are bitter. Do you usually save them to use in any other, like a vegetable stock or anything? Or are you, do you usually have to discard them? I usually discard them or compost them, you know? Um, in, in roasting preparations, I would just like these, I would just use, see, I would, I'm using all the, all the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So um, really it's just for this dish, this, this kind of a dish where you're just really want the outside kind of, um, what's happening is we're going to cook this in, in, in fairly warm olive oil really quickly and we're going to stop. So we really want to, we're really, it's really a raw, almost raw uh, zucchini dish. And for that, we really want the firm outside of the zucchini. Now, if you do get one of these things, the, um, it's one of the good things is to try to, you know, to keep from cutting your fingers, try not just go down in the middle yourself, go down one, one edge. So I'm gonna go down one edge and see what this looks like. See, it's much finer. I'm gonna go a little, there's an adjustment for both sides. That's a little deep. And then I'll just turn the zucchini. Now I turned it quarter turn, so I'm gonna go, there, there, I 
And you can set this in a, in a dish too. It makes it a little more stable. Like you could put this into like a little lasagna dish or, or whatever. So, or a little cake, but uh, basically a, a loaf pan or something so that the, this end is, is held and this ends up on the, and it gives you a little bit more stability. And then I just, I get down to the kind of the seeds and I just do the corners. The seeds are left. Kind of zucchini spaghetti. There is a, this, those things that you actually put the zucchini on, probably do that. You probably could do that too. I've never used one of those. So I'm going to do a little more. And I'll use all the rest of that in my ratatouille later. So that's our Julianne. And then I've got our, uh, I'm just going to cut the cheese in half so that it's a little easier to handle because we're going to use a, we're going to use a uh, uh, vegetable peeler to shave it on the top of the salad. Another great technique, another just slicing tool. You could use this tool too. You could take this, you could take this uh, julienne blade out and just use the straight, the straight blade and, and get it much, much finer. Um, but I, I do like this trick too. This is another great trick. It's just, uh, just using a, when you want to shave something, just using a vegetable peeler. These are those restaurant quality looking So we'll put those on the side and we'll come back to that. And then I've just got, I've got some regular pure olive oil. Um, a lot of people try to, they, they tell you like on the Food Network to try it and use, and use extra virgin when you're cooking. And uh, the problem with using extra virgin in a, in a heated uh, situation is, is all that fruit just goes away as soon as it gets warm. So um, it's really better to have pure olive oil on, on, on hand and extra virgin olive oil for salads and drizzling on things and uh, a little bit in dressings, things like that. Uh, if you're making a mayonnaise or um, if you use too much extra virgin, uh, you'll get a kind of a metallic taste out of it. Uh, so we always use pure olive oil when we make, when we make our own uh, aiolis and mayonnaise and stuff like that. Um, this recipe calls for... Um, it's a couple tablespoons of olive oil. Um, it, it's it's really the only oil in the dish, so it's basically it, it's the it's the dressing for the whole dish. So it's pretty important to have enough to um, to get the almond flavor throughout that. So what it is we're basically going to do is we're going to warm up the olive oil. We're going to add the the almonds. We're going to wait till they're perfectly light brown. And and they're gonna and they're gonna transfer their nutty flavor to the whole um, oil in the pan, and then we're gonna toss this in and turn the heat off and toss the uh, zucchini two or three times with salt and pepper. It's gonna go back on this plate, and we're gonna put the shaved cheese on top, and that's really the whole the whole thing. Um, and that's why I wanted to show you some stuff. It takes. Uh, I've demoed this before and it took about three minutes and we were done and everybody was like, what, what happened? So we'll, uh, 
stretch it out a little bit. Then we come over the stove here. You can't see it, but Pickles the French Bulldog is at, is literally under my feet. She's she likes to sit right in the middle of the action. Always there to help lend a helping paw. I guess. Yeah, yeah, she's always that, and, and and her friend Nugget comes in and does the other side by the cutting board. <laughs> so, so I'm going to add a couple tablespoons of of olive oil here. I don't like that. It's pretty good. And I'm gonna add these almonds. And like I said, the natural almonds, I kind of like them a little better, but these work. Just get the sliced ones. The slivered ones don't work as well with this salad. You really want the sliced ones. So we're just gonna warm these up and we're gonna kind of wait for them to start to start turning light brown. What's what, well, like I said, what happens is that flavors all the olive oil in the pan. Um, and then, uh, and then that coats the zucchini, but basically you don't cook the zucchini. Basically, as soon as you add the zucchini, you take it off the stove. We're just going to toss it a couple times. We're going to add a little sea salt. I've got sea salt in a, in a grinder here. We're going to do uh, a little salt and but you could use kosher salt or anything you have. And the fresh ground pepper. You should always grind your own pepper. Grind, grind, get a fresh grind pepper grinder because the as soon as you grind pepper, it starts to lose its uh, its floral uh, flavor. So after twenty minutes, you basically just like having table pepper. Beautiful fragrance. It's starting to bubble. This is one of those dishes where, yeah, it's good to have. So you have your zucchinis ready. You've got your cheese already already done. It's what we call in the business uh, mise en place. Uh, in French, that means everything in its place. So you can. It's uh, a lot like if you have everything ready, it's a lot to uh, off because this you're going to see this happen so fast. Chef, they're just starting to turn, yeah. Uh, what heat are you uh, doing? This I'm, I'm going fairly high. I'm going fairly high right now. I'm going to turn it down just a little bit. As long as you don't overcook the almonds, it doesn't really matter what heat you do. You got to do medium to high, probably, to okay. get this to get them toasting like this. And if you could smell it through the camera. Smell the almonds starting to get nice and fresh. We'll take these a little farther. You see, they're starting to turn light brown. You don't want to go too far because you don't want to be bitter, but you really want to give them a chance to flavor the oil because that really, like I said before, that is the dressing. I'm moving them around a lot because I want to try to get them as even as possible. You don't want one burned, burned almond over here. To... That looks pretty good. You see how we're getting to a really kind of nutty, nice light toasty brown. It smells like almonds in the kitchen. Quite nice. Perfect. 
turn it off. And I'm going to add the zucchini. You can hear it sizzle just a little bit. And we're going to do quick salt pepper. And toss it once. Twice. Back on the plate. And back over here. And we've got this really nice two year old aged Parmigiano Reggiano. We're just going to drape that over. And I think we're done. Maybe another little crack of pepper. And the cheese has a little salt to it too, so that's gonna that's gonna aid in the whole thing. And that's it. It's a little raw zucchini salad, basically with almonds and and grana parmesan. Uh, bon appetit. Any questions? Wow, it looks great. Very looks great. Um, would love to be able to smell it. <laughs> yeah, it smells great. It's got this great nutty flavor. You can. You can really, um, it's really a fun one to try. It's really, it's really easy. Like I said, these would work fine. You might want to keep, keep them in the pan a little bit longer if they're figure, a little thicker than these, but not much. You really want it the raw zucchini um, idea, flavors and the crunch, little slight crunch. And, and then you get the saltiness and you get the almond flavor and the almonds coats, the, coats all the zucchini. It's a really lovely salad. I've been doing it for years. People go crazy for the salad. And I know, yeah, it's called the warm salad, but can it also be served, you know, cold or like, you know, leftovers reheated? Or would you serve it cold if you save it for later? Yeah, I mean, you, you could. It kind of kind of wilts after a little while. I mean, it would mm -hmm. be fine to eat, to eat like that. Um, it really is room temperature. By the time you get this to, to the table, you know, it's still slightly warm. And uh it's, but that's it. It's really just a lightly warm salad. It can be sort of, you know, I wouldn't let it sit too long before I ate it. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> if anyone has any other questions, feel free to unmute yourself and ask directly or also um, write them in the chat. Happy to pass them along. <laughs> so I said, it looks great. Thank you, Chef. <laughs> Great, yeah, yeah, and it's great to have the both color zucchinis. If you can get the gold ones too, I didn't see any gold ones that were the ones I like, so I didn't buy the crooknecks. But um, crooknecks work as well, but they have a lot of seeds, and they're kind of shaped kind of weird for cutting on this. Um, it's better to have the nice straight zucchini so you can do the whole the whole thing. Great. Oh, and someone was asking for recommendations on where to get knives sharpened. Um. Good question. I have a guy in Carmel that does my knives, uh, but he goes restaurant to restaurant. Um, that's the other. Oh, there's a really good guy. Um, some of the farmers markets. I don't know if you guys have ever had anybody do, doing sharpening at like maybe Pacific Grove or. We have. Uh, I don't think they're currently there, but we have. Um, but that's a good place to look out for knife sharpers. There's a lot of knife sharpers that, that, that are at the farmers markets. Um, uh, that's how I met the guy that I use. And then. these chefs and
Well, we seem to be having some technical difficulties. I think we lost Chef there. We'll see if he's able to rejoin. Um, but for now, thank you all so much for coming to our cooking demo today. And I hope you learned a few new things. I know I learned some great knife skills I hadn't tried before. And uh, if you do come uh, to, we hope you come to one of our farmer's markets soon. And if you do stop by our info booth and let us know you attended one of our cooking workshops and we will give you a $10 voucher for produce to spend at our market. So please come on by and say hi. And also uh, you can check out our website for more information as well as follow us on Instagram and Facebook to get more updates about events like this and all of our farmers markets and other fun activities happening. So thank you all so much for coming. Um, we'll see if it looks like Chef might be joining back on. We'll see, but um, thank you all so much. Oh, sorry. sorry. No worries, Chef. I know it's the, always having technical difficulties this day and age. <laughs> yep. Got your sous well, chef. Thanks again. Now. That was that was fun. Thank you so much, Chef. Thank you everyone for coming. Have a great day. Cheers. Cool.